With this Alex Jones psyop, you would think you'd want to get him in the news a lot before they do the distraction of taking his channel away, YouTube and Twitter. It looks like Adam Green here, before the last month, was pumping him up with uh, shows. Is Alex Jones ushering in the Antichrist? Yeah, Alex Jones caught lying. Alex Jones, okay. Uh, Alex Jones, and then, you know, Ryan Dawson. Right around here, the final thoughts on Chris Dorsey and the militia is when it all ended. I had made some videos, and he didn't acknowledge them, but I critiqued them. And then it seems like he brought in his people. Ken O'Keefe, Brendan O'Connor, CGT Report, QAnon, and Christopher Bolin. And uh, he used them for support, whatever they call these groups. He needed to soothe his hurt Jewish ego and try to get his channel back on track. He's a shill. It seems like one of his main jobs is giving a mic to Ken O'Keefe and Chris Bolin and bringing Alex Jones back. We'll listen to the tape of Chris Bolin talking about his Israeli girlfriend. Then I'm going to talk a little about the history of the Fresh family and the Bushes. And we'll come in and tie it in to Christopher Bolin at the end. But I wound up in Israel and I went to this kibbutz and uh, spent, uh, you know, for a guy living on the road, um, it was a secure place to live. And, and I spent, I went back there a few times. And I had a personal uh, relationship with an Israeli girl, a couple of Israeli girls, but one that lasted for a while. And, um, you know, as time Got went some on. true confessions here. Yeah, as time went on, she became a. Uh, well, some of these Israeli girls are very, very charming. And she um, became a. Uh, she, she went to her military time, she went into military intelligence. And, and she was based in Herzliya. So, you know. And she um, became a. Uh, she, she went to her military time, she went into military intelligence. And. And she was based in Herzliya. So, you know, when I visited her in Israel, I was also staying in Herzliya. The Faresh family. There are certain individuals and families whose names are not household words, but whose careers and connections open a window on the ways that power and wealth operate in American society. The history of the Faresh family of Houston is particularly revealing, not least because of its long-term connections with Prescott, Bush, and George H.W. Bush. William Stamps Farage, Sr., 1881 to 1942, was president of Standard Oil in the 1930s. His wife, Libby Raiden Rice, was related by blood or marriage to a set of prominent and influential Houston families. The Bush Faresh connection was strengthened in the 1939 when Faresh's daughter, Martha Botts Faresh, married Edward Harriman Jerry. Edward was the nephew of Abril Harriman, a co-founder of the W.A. Harriman, and his older brothers was a partner at the firm, which by then was known as Brown Brothers Harriman and Company. This whole section of American history is skull and bones with the Bush family, Prescott Bush, the leader, and Harriman. Henry Stimson was also involved in this, the one who dropped the atom bomb. Harriman was the leader of the Democratic Party and the Bush family, the Republican Party, and they were skull and bones and they worked together, which shows you that there is no problem between the Democrats and the Republicans. This is all the Hegelian stuff of conflict. You create a visible conflict, but they're actually working together both sides against us. So basically, Faresh family was as big as Bush and close to Harriman without having to be known to the public. The skull and bone situation, you'd have to read Anthony Sutton, all his, there's videos on YouTube. It runs very, very deep goes back to Nathan Hale, who was George Washington's spy. These people are the ones that built America 
along with the Chinese opium trade, made millions. And then in China, Mao Zedong went to Yale in China and was involved with them there. And they, he was supported by the United States. The U.S. built up Bolsheviks and built up Chinese communism. Why? Huh. And the American Revolution, Yale is actually older than the United States is. So back to William Stamp Faresh Sr. He is best known for having continued doing business with Nazi Germany even after the outbreak of World War II. After World War II, he took the fall for Nelson Rockefeller and the trading with the enemy stuff, which included Prescott Bush. And they really hounded Fresh Sr. Him, he got depressed, he died of a heart attack. The fortune was left to his son, William Stamps Faresh Jr. He was married to Mary Wood. Her father, General Robert E. Wood, was the president of Sears Roebuck and a consistent supporter of extreme right-wing causes. And he died within months in some training exercise in the military, leaving it to the four-year-old William Stamp Foresh III, what amounted to about $200 million. This is the one we're interested in respect to Bolin. Born in 1939, is both extraordinarily wealthy and extraordinarily secretive. He has been described as George H.W. Bush's closest friend and confidant. His wife, Sarah Sharp, is a DuPont heiress. Faresh's relationship with George H.W. is the only thing that has kept him somewhat in public eye. George and Barbara Bush were very close to Mary Faresh and her son as the boy was growing up. When Bush moved to Texas in 1948, it was Faresh connection that gave him his start in his career as an oil man. As young Faresh matured, he and Bush, who was 15 years his elder, became friends. Faresh invested in Bush's Zapata Oil Company and became Bush's personal aide in his, in his unsuccessful 1964 campaign for Senate. When Bush was elected vice president in 1980, Faresh's investment firm handled the management of his stocks in a blind trust. And while Bush was president, Faresh was a frequent visitor to the White House who advised Bush on issues and served as his confidant. In 2001, Faresh became George W. Bush's ambassador to Great Britain. His primary qualifications for this job appears to be his friendship with Queen Elizabeth. As one account has said, Mr. Faresh has a long-standing relationship with Britain's Queen Elizabeth who was an avid horse breeder and racing enthusiast. On four occasions, the Queen has visited Mr. Faresh's stables in Kentucky, staying with Mr. Faresh and his wife each time. Here is an earlier statement. George and Barbara Bush were very close to Mary Faresh and her son as the boy was growing up. The connection Christopher Bolin has with all of this is through his mother. His mother, Charlotte, this is Christopher Bolin's website, bolin.com. His mother, Charlotte, grew up in southwestern North Dakota, the daughter of Scandinavian and Swiss homesteaders. Charlotte was an educator and interior designer who held advanced degrees from Columbia University. Columbia University um, was left Averill Harriman's mansion in New York. When she studied in New York, Charlotte worked as governess for the Faresh family and took care of young William S. Faresh III, the former U.S. ambassador to the United Kingdom and friend of the Bush family. Both of Christopher's parents served in World War II. How is that possible? This is a little bit ridiculous. There's the Israeli wife and now his mother was governess to one of the big 
were New World Order families with the Bush. So how do we deal with this? From what I've seen in the past, this is all Haspara, Zionist Haspara. What they do is they want conflict. So they include something like Bolin with an Israeli wife and they have this as mother being a governess for a kid that is worth $200 million and was around the bushes. Okay, so what they do is it seems like they want the two sides to be in conflict. So they give our side a little material. It's not really strong so that like Bolin's side and Adam Green's side can debate it and still stick with their concept that Bolin is a hero and found Israel out about 9-11. And they keep it there teetering. So we could argue our side, they can argue their side. It's never anything really clear. It just instigates and keeps everything somewhere chaotic. And this is the way they do things. Come on now, Adam. Do they tell you that you have to support this kind of stuff that's in his life? Do they even let you know? Or do they just set you up to go push them? And then you find out, like today, that you have to back up this guy whose mother was a governess to the Fareshes, who the kid knew, knows the queen, and the queen stays at his house. What are we talking here? Come on now. We can simplify this as Chris Bolin, who is all over the Zionists and the Jews, has connections to them, and a paper could be written on how he grew up with a mother that was around the bushes who did 9-11. How's he? He's connected to the whole 9-11. No? Okay. Our government had many, many shills lined up, spokespeople for 9-11 coverage to bring everybody in on some level of conspiracy theory, and none of them are right. They're all confusion. They're all a red herring. They're all misleading you. All the whistleblowers that came out that know the way the government works, they're intel people, and they would be the ones to tell Bush, hey Georgie, we looked at all the material and it looks like the U.S. and Israel did it, huh? 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 They would figure it all out. That's Snowden and Chelsea Manning and even Assange would know. They know exactly who did it. It's their job to know who did it, even if it is their own country that did it. And they have all these people out there picking up all kinds of followers by professionals that put out that most likely it was the Arabs that did it. The Zionists are playing some kind of game. They're producing all these people that are anti-Semitic and hate Jews to keep the average Jew afraid and paranoid that the rest of the people are against them and they better go to Israel, they, get a, they better get protection, they better support Spielberg, they better support everybody or they're gonna get holocaustic, baby. So this is Israel, Netanyahu supports the LGBT, LGBT Pride Month in Israel when a corrupt system asks you, you forget that it's still corrupt. Okay. Does anybody know right-wing countries, right-wing leaders that push LGBTQ in history? I'm not saying the leaders might. The leaders might be perverts and all this, but pushes to the people an extreme left-wing sexual gender craziness? Come on, Adam. I'm sitting here lonely. I've asked you to talk to me. I'm not a rude person. No ad hominem stuff. Let's discuss Ken O'Keefe's Mavi Marmara story. And let's discuss these two things about Chris Bolin, the Israeli wife and his mom being a governess to the 
bushy feshies, fushies, forishies, the fishes. Come on now. Adam Green, stop with the Jew news. You live in California. I live in California. Peace to you, brother, and your mother. All I need is the air that I